look, I don't have a dog in this race, but from my perspective, dog racing is still a very relatable analogy. <laughs> Previously on Delayed Input. You have to hope that just 2023 was a, just a terrible year for turmoil and layoffs and that 2024 things might return to this sort of healthy normalcy. Earlier today, Microsoft lays off 1,900 staff from its video game workforce. Blizzard cancels survival game following layoffs. Over 5,000 game industry workers have already lost their jobs in 2024. Well, it looks like we might have ourselves another year where you can't talk about how good video games are without also acknowledging how unstable and ruthless the video games industry is. So here it is, my regular acknowledgement. We got more bad news this week. Okay, because here's the thing. Two of 2024's most anticipated titles are releasing on this very Friday, and they are both bona fide, critical darlings. It's one of those weeks where I just kind of find myself feeling grateful and happy to be here. Tekken 8 seems to be a fighting game all-timer. Infinite wealth will make me sick if I play it too much? I'm ready, baby. Somebody call my doctor. Tell her I'm gonna need some help. Tekken 8 was officially revealed in September of 2022, and then Like a Dragon 8 was also officially revealed in September of 2022. They're twins. There's these two eight-numbered sequels in these long-standing franchises announced in the same month, and then a year and a half less than, a year and a half later, releasing on the exact same day. I think that's something. And when you think about it, when a video game series gets to eight, it's getting a little tired normally, a little long in the tooth, and you don't feel that about these two. These two, I expect to set records for sales in their respective franchises. It can't be easy to sell an eight, right? You gotta sell an eight to your audience who already loves you, and you have to sell an eight to this brand new audience who has no idea what your deal is. So let's take a look at the two directions these two games took. So let's start with Tekken 8. Firstly, obviously, there are many character trailers for its many characters. Character trailers for fighting games have an established simple recipe. You start with your in-game character intro. This is how you see them walk up before the match starts. You start with your simple moves and combos, and then you get more complex specials. We ramp up to some of the more cinematic attacks, and then we reveal the final ultra move that costs all your meter. And then, of course, you end with their winning pose. It's a winning formula. There's no reason to change that. It shows you everything you need to see. What's crazy and unprecedented about Tekken 8 is that they did this for every one of their 32 characters. And look, they started rolling these out 11 months ago. Even, even Street Fighter VI eventually was just like, here's these three guys. But no, for Tekken 8, every individual character got their individual trailer. You always had a new character to look forward to. And that lasted for almost a full year. I like how they did that. On the other hand, there is this live action trailer they made where everyone in the world is touching foreheads with each other. And honestly, I don't know if this is good or bad. It's like a Muse music video. But what I find really interesting about Tekken 8 here, so close to the game's final release, is that the main broad marketing angle seems to be showing moments from the story mode. The majority of the launch trailer is cutscenes. And at the end, there are these three main bullet points. Epic storyline, 32 playable characters. Uh-huh, great. What's the third thing? Online fight lounge. That's a weird sell. I don't even, what does that even, what, am I going to lounge? But the trailer concludes here in this scene. You don't have to know who these people are or why they're fighting. This just has this palpable energy to it. We're eight games into a decades old franchise and this one feels like an event. Tekken 8? Sold. It's a fun contrast to how Infinite Wealth seems to be selling itself, which mostly just seems to be saying, hey, we're just having a great time out here. My primary takeaway is just that it seems like the side content of the game 
is the primary content of the marketing. However, I do think it's worth bringing up the first big reveal of the game in last summer's Xbox Games Showcase. It's July of last year. We still don't know anything about this game. So they got this huge live audience, this huge opportunity, and I think this is a smart teaser. For a franchise that repeatedly uses the exact same locations for several games in a row, this very clearly demonstrates what is the big different thing about this one. We're going to Hawaii. Also, our hero is naked and not sure how he got here. So if you're familiar with the franchise, you understand immediately what's new. You're hooked. You're in. Remember, though, Like a Dragon is one of Sega's five pillars of globally valuable IP. By the way, how do they explain what Like a Dragon is? It depicts the way of life of a cast of fierce men in a vast entertainment district. Using an actual entertainment district as its backdrop, the game realistically captures the look and feel of that world. So they need more than just the regular fans in on this one. It's, it's like a Dragon 8. How do we get new people in? And I think that's why it's smart that maybe the trailers focus less on the RPG mechanics and the story hooks and more on... Stuff like this. Aim for the top and become the strongest Sujimon manager. And I should say, to be fair, they do have a story trailer and a 10 minute extended version of that story trailer. But frankly, they don't hit as hard. All you get is the precious time you're given. You ready for this, Kasuga? Let's do this. So you have this super long RPG where you'll spend a healthy chunk of time in the turn-based battle system and the story will eventually get too intense and you will cry by the end of it. But in this case for this franchise, I think it's the right call to focus the marketing on the things that pop immediately to anyone at first glance. Like a dragon infinite wealth? Sold. Of course when I say sold... I'm speaking personally as a fan of both franchises, but you have to ask, what about regular people? What about the people who go to a bar and when they hear a song they like, they dance to it? What about people who when they're looking for a laugh, they log into Facebook? What about, the, what about the people who go to a grocery store and buy milk and then take it home and then when they're thirsty, they pour themselves a glass of milk? What about them? Well, we all know there is one final tried and true method for getting regular people to pay attention to your video game, and that is creating a commercial starring a completely unrelated celebrity. So Tekken 8 booked Brian Cox, known for his iconic starring role in the Emmy Award winning Succession and making McDonald's likable. I'm surprised at how attracted I am to it. And he explains the entire plot of the entire Tekken franchise to you in just five minutes. Now, of all the reasons to look forward to Tekken 8, I would say the legacy of the storyline is probably not a high priority. However, remember, this is an 8, right? When people hear Tekken 8, they think, ugh, am I going to have to play all the others to just even understand what's going on? Obviously not, but here for you is Brian Cox, and he's saying, don't worry about it, I got your back. Heihachi did what any loving father would do. Threw Kazuya off this cliff to see if he would survive. I think it was a great move. Whatever they paid Brian Cox was worth it. Infinite Wealth opted to go with actor and comedian Drewski. Honestly, my exposure to Drewski was mostly through Google Pixel commercials. And you get the idea watching these, it's like, oh, this is, I guess this is, this is probably somebody famous on the internet, and he is. The problem with this ad is that Drewski is making no attempt to prepare you for infinite wealth. He kind of just looks serious at the camera and says ambiguous things like this. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. I, it simply doesn't work for me. And I do realize, once more, that is just me, right? Clearly I'm wrong about this. If putting irrelevant celebrities in commercials for video games didn't work, marketers would stop doing it. I mean, watch this commercial and try to tell me you are not watering at the mouth to go play some Persona 3. The time has come to wield your power, accept your destiny. 
and seal your fate. Look, I know money is tight in the games industry right now, but it is so important that they keep making commercials like that. And that is delayed input for this week. Thanks for watching. <laughs>Two weeks ago, I put Suicide Squad DLC character trailers on my most anticipated trailers list because I couldn't wait to see how they would try to sell the Joker to us. Somewhat surprisingly, this week the Joker was revealed in Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, but not in a trailer. Just couched into the final minutes of Suicide Squad Insider Episode 3. So the way you're introduced to this brand new take on the Joker is just a bunch of developers explaining it to you. He's masking insecurities with traditional Joker behavior, but deep down, he's not sure who he is yet. Lock him up. Oh, making new friends after a move is always tough. It actually drives me nuts how much writers overthink the Joker. All he has to be is, you know, <laughs> try to keep up, that's it. Ta-ta. You know, all, all he has to, he just has to be like a, uppity weirdo. Unfortunately, clearly, the lines are written, the lines are recorded, the dork Joker is locked in for season one of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, but he still has a chance to have a good trailer. Here's what I recommend. First of all, before this even gets started, know this, he's free. Okay, we're not charging anyone for this. It's the Joker. Look how fun this looks. You can mute his dialogue. You can skip the cutscenes. It's Pal World minus Pokemon plus Joker. <laughs>